Toronto. I don't know. Yeah, it'd probably be Toronto. It won't be Boston. No, but, it won't no. Be. but the thing is with this team is you got Bellinelli and Hilo Silva. That is, ever since they got them, they're a different team. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? So forget about stats in the past or whatever. And also, from January to April on their uh, run of 35 and 11, they beat 13 teams that are in the playoffs right now. Absolutely. My um, my prediction is I believe the Houston Rockets are going to win the NBA championship this year. And I believe they're going to beat the Philadelphia 76ers to do it. Wow. Man. I think the Sixers make it to the finals this year. Look. <coughs> LeBron's the only. I, look, I know he's LeBron, but he's the only guy in Cleveland. He's the only guy you got to worry about in Cleveland. And Unless for, Kevin Love shows up. But right now he's a shell of his former self. Kyrie's out. Toronto's trending downward. Um, Miami, the Miami that gave us a little bit of a, a little bit of a headache earlier in the year, is playing a completely different Sixers team. Since Bellinelli and, Ilyaso Bellinelli and Ilyasova got here, who, by the way, on Tuesday night, they combined for 46 points coming off the bench. That's scary. It's, it's insane. They, like, instantly, they become a, a three-point shooting team. Oh, and by the way, um, Embiid hasn't even been around for, you know, the last six, seven games, whatever it is. I hope he transition, transitions back into their system properly because... They've been on the roll without them, man. So you, you have them losing to Houston in the, in the finals. Yeah. Even though the Sixers actually do have a win over the Rockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I mean, listen, the playoffs are a whole different animal. Than I'd love to season. be wrong. Don't oh, I, wrong. I, 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 I listen, know. I think if they get to the finals, they win. I just – I They fear... win. If they get to the finals, they win. If they're able to get all through these playoffs – and the young team turns into this juggernaut of an offense, which every single um, analyst is saying right now that they're a juggernaut offense, and they're 16-0, um, they're averaging 118 points a game. I, I just, mean, that's, I just that's more than the Houston Rockets all season. They're, like, if, the, if they played the same way at the beginning, they're the number one seed in the Eastern yeah. Conference. I just fear uh, Russell Westbrook. I mean, I, I fear James Harden just as much. <clears throat> But Russell Westbrook, I mean, he, he does a lot of things similar to Ben. Um, I would put him above Ben right, right now. now. Right now. Um, down the road, I see Ben far surpassing him. Um, but, you know, Russell Westbrook, he's just a, such a special player. And, it, and considering we haven't beaten him yet, we don't have that recipe right. of figuring out how to do it in right. the 7 Well, games. he gets his stats no matter what, so that yeah. it is what it is. So let him run wild, shut down the rest of the team. Well, you can't do that to the Sixers. The same thing applies with those guys as it does with kind of my theory against Miami is they're not playing the same Sixers team that they played earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I would say, Tom, to your finals <clears> prediction, <throat> that would probably be what the NBA wants because if the Sixers are shooting threes like they're shooting now and you have the Houston Rockets, it's going to be like a 149, yeah. 157. Yeah. I'm wanting to count game. Golden State out. I got, I got Golden I'm State. I'm not, but I just don't think – go ahead. I think Golden State's going to be against the Sixers. Yeah. That, that, dude, dude I'm telling you right now, that would be a very entertaining final. I don't know if Golden State's going to go as far as people think they are because it, it just seems like they're breaking apart. It feels you, like they're banged up and breaking apart right now. But they could have them. us all bamboozled. The Sixers right now on the streak that they're on, they can match any team in the NBA in three-point shooting. It's it's insane. Yeah, and, and I think having home court in the first round definitely going to help. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're playing out of their minds at home. I don't know. Do we have those numbers at all of what their home record is? It's, at, I don't know. It's definitely you know, a winning record. record. It's good. I see a bunch of stuff jotted down on your notepad there. Do you have <laughs> any numbers over there? I got plenty, man. Um, but you got other things that you want to talk about. The Sixers, not just can they make it through the playoffs and go to the finals. No, absolutely. There are some. <clears throat> I got their matchups against Miami, and Miami yeah. is a, a middle of the pack team. Give me your matchups right. against against Miami. How you how you feel they match up? I think, like I said, it's a different it's a different team. And by the way, we haven't even talked about Markel Fultz, youngest player in NBA history to record a triple double. Oh, he's dump. he's going to show he up. He is yet. definitely going. He, him and Simmons by the end of this first round, they're going to be a one two punch. Dude, that Listen, was so awesome. The way he the way he got that rebound. Yes. I'm watching it, and I'm like, dude, get on the rim. Get on the rim. They're shooting a three. He, sh he shoots a shot, and then right there he catches it, and his whole team tackles. I love that. Awesome. I love that. I love how the whole team supports it through everything. I mean, the guys missed, like, 80% of the season, 
and that team has got his back. You so, get yeah, that feel. Absolutely. You get that feel how the Eagles were. How yeah. They celebrated together yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you're probably going to break this team up coming up next season because you're not going to pay J.J. Redick that much money. You know? True. Even though he's averaging 17 a game, but you could you could fill his void. You know what I mean? You could fill that. I, I know you can. I mean, for me, with – I think Fultz, obviously, I, I think I would love to have him out there as a shot guard. Right. It's, well, if, if, if his shot develops more. It looks like it's starting to. It is. It's coming around. You know? I mean, when you've got two slashers like him and Simmons, I mean, they're going to just kind of drive to the hole, kick it out, drive Dude. to the hole, kick it out. Like, Joey, defenses are going to be dizzy. He came off the bench that game, and he played better than Ben Simmons. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I, I texted you that night. I said, Ben's got, like, four, three or four points in the fourth quarter before they pulled him out. I'm like, a guy who still has that much impact on a game but doesn't have to score But, but see, that's a, a that's a problem. When you draft a guy like Fultz, he's a point guard. Simmons, point guard. How do you do? He's the first overall pick. You can't have him being the sixth man forever. Well, what I'll, do you do? I'll agree with some analysts who say that there's no such thing as like positions anymore. No, nah, right? it's it's almost like positionless basketball now. Yeah. They call it. And, and so, like, I don't even say okay. Yeah, point needs to do this. No, no, no. no. But, but when you this. have a fast point guard, regardless of his height and his ability to shoot or whatever, you have to match <coughs> that point guard. You know what I mean? You can't sit there and just say, oh, because Simmons is tall, he can stick him. If he's fast, he's going right by Simmons. Yeah. He's dribbling back. He's he's causing havoc out there. So I, I disagree with that. I think positions are positions. And right now the Sixers shot guard is averaging 17 points a game and is a hell of a three-point shooter, which I love my shot guard yeah. to be. But obviously he's not Michael Jordan. You know, Michael Jordan was the best shot guard of all time. All right, so getting back to the Heat playoff prediction, I, I have the Sixers beating the Heat in five. I think I agree with you, Tom, that this Heat team and this Sixer team is definitely like they're two different teams now. Uh, the Sixers, they're putting it together. They're seeing what each other can contribute and adding it together to dominate teams. They prove have proven in this final stretch that if you are a bad team, and even with the Bucks and the Cavs, if you're not a bad team. We're going to railroad you if you give us the opportunity. Yeah, it sounds like they're taking full advantage of those opportunities that they're given. Yeah. What do you think, Will? That's Miami. Well, I got uh, quick stats during the regular season. Now, the Sixers average 109.8 points a game. Obviously, the beginning of the season, they weren't the jug of that offense. So, those stats could be up there with the Houston Rockets and the Golden State easily. Um, Miami, 103.4. They got hot near the end, too. But that's ranked 23rd in the NBA. The Sixers' points differential, they're beating teams by 6 point. The, the, no, their plus-minus is 4.5. Miami's is .5. And not only that, the Sixers got a bunch of ranked number ones. They're number one in rebounding. They're number one in points in the paint. I, I had no idea. Once I did that research, I saw that. Miami doesn't have any single digits except points in the paint. They're ranked ninth. So it's a lopsided without Embiid. I think you could probably sit and beat two games, three games. Yeah. You might be able to sit them for the series. I, I feel like Miami just can't beat the Sixers team. That's, that's, I mean, that's my, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, my biggest concern, if we don't have Embiid, is Whiteside being able to handle that guy down low. Because I think Embiid could handle him. And that would take a little bit of a con- I mean, he doesn't concern me enough that he's the X Factor. Yeah. Like he's going to win he the get, game. He gets into foul trouble, mm-hmm. though. And the way the Sixers have been playing yeah. lately, they'll get him into foul yeah, trouble. Absolutely, we get him into foul trouble. That was my next question. Uh, as far as Embiid goes, how, how many games do you think Embiid's going to miss? I'd say two. I agree, two. And I'm two. hoping for two because... I just hope he doesn't come back too soon. That's what I don't yeah. want to Although, listening to Brett Brown talking today on uh, one of the other stations, um, it was almost like there was like an underlying... I think he's going to miss more than two games. Almost like he might hold him out the entire first round. Well, if you go up 2-0, there's no sense of bringing him in. You know what I mean? If you yeah. go up 2 0 in Miami, there's no sense of bringing them beat in, especially if you're almost winning by double digits, which I think they're going to do. I don't think Miami has an answer for the Sixers bench, really. I feel like, I feel like that's what's going to help them. Miami, you know, got Dwayne Wade, but 
you know, Dwayne Wade's going to get shut down, dude. I'm telling you right now. He's not going to show up like he did the way he did on, in those two games. No, he'll go for spurts. But yeah, he's yeah. just he's too old now to, to be able to run the floor. I, I mean, especially with the Sixers and, team. Well, and, he's and, a shooter, and lately yeah. the Sixers are, as soon as they inbound it, Simmons is flying down the court. Yeah. His stamina is unbelievable. I don't think you ever need to take him out of a game. It, it feels like that. I've never, I've never seen that kid gassed. I'm telling you right now. And in the playoffs, you're going to see Simmons playing 40 minutes. The only thing I'll say is, is that I would, even if we were up 2-0, and Brett said, "Hey, Joe, I, I, I just want to keep you out." The, the fear that I have is Joe's like such a competitor. He's such the athlete that he wants to Maybe play. Maybe game four. What, if you're up my thing is exactly what I was just going to say. You're yeah. up three zero. Yeah. Bring him in. See how he does. You know, it, you know? look. He's, but you won't he's, put him in for forty minutes. He's a, he's a transcendent player. And now he's, if he goes two two, you definitely bring him in. I mean, or two one. Embiid's one of the top ten players in the league. Yeah, yeah. Easily, 20, maybe three points a game. Maybe t- maybe game. top five. And he only plays top like five, about thirty four sure. minutes. A game. Oh, definitely center. Yeah. And he doesn't even play a full game at all. Not even mm-hmm. close to what no. you know what the previous centers in the NBA have played. Yeah. And I mean, here here's my thing is. If, if, like you say, Will, like if they actually start to look like they're coming back like in the series, yeah, you, you have that way of pu- pushing that trigger and saying, okay, Joe, go get him. But I don't want it to get to 2-2. Two, two. It has to be 2-1 that he pulls the trigger. Well, you know Miami's pounding you with Whiteside. Oh, yeah. You know it. You yeah, they're going to pound you with him. Right, because who are you going to have on, on Whiteside? It's going to be Holmes? Well, last yep. time I checked, Whiteside can't shoot a three. The Sixers are going to be draining threes. Oh, yeah. And three you know, twos for and if B does yeah. come in, what what did Brett Brown said? He wants him to shoot at least seven a game. Is yeah. that what he said? Yeah. Well, they, that's can, the number I he shoots for. You could probably try bringing him off the bench, maybe game three or something. You know, or even he, game two. He's not coming off the bench. My man's going to come right into the game. He's going to uh-huh. start the game. Yeah, but the chemistry, Fan, though, phantom that, of the process. Yeah, but the issue is, um, <laughs> if this team comes out game one and destroys Miami, I agree with you. But and and B's totally healthy. The way I bring him back in is off the bench. That's the way I would bring him back. Yeah, in. Yeah, I, I don't think he would. You go gotta for that. work. You gotta work. In that situation, you have to be worried about what what message you're sending to him. Then, like, you have to be clear. Okay, or, I'm or, bringing you off the or bench. Technically, I'm worried about or your technically, I kind of change his role a little bit because the way Holmes has been playing, you know, mm-hmm. Holmes has been playing pretty damn well. He really has. And he's open for a lot of jumpers, and Bead's not going to be open for those. They're going to sick at Bead, which means other guys are going to be left open. I feel like now the Sixers found out how to play without Embiid. Now they got to figure out how to play with him when he comes back. I don't well, think so. They so played I, with him the majority of the year. Yeah, it's not, but it's not. You it's, just shift it's, your it's offense. It's a back different around. team now, dude. No. Well, you just you know, he was he was here when Ilyasov and Bellinelli came back. It's not yeah. like he got and look at their numbers after that. They destroyed teams when Embiid was out. So it's. He's gonna I come mean, back and dominate as soon yeah. as he comes back. I mean, well, that's because that's he has a because he has a uh, a point to prove. Yeah. Like he's he's got that chip on his shoulder. He's like, damn, I can't. This is my team. This yeah. is me and Simmons' team. You know, that's, that's why what I think he's gonna it's do. gonna be hard to keep him yeah. on the bench because it's gonna be hard to contain that. Yeah, he wants flow back that in game one, and I wouldn't be. I would not be surprised if he plays game one. He wants back in. Yeah, I don't. He, I don't. I don't know if it's gonna happen. He he said that if. If he's ready, he's playing. That's exactly what he said. He said it's not about what the trainer. The trainers are going to say what they say. But if I'm ready and the train, like no matter what, he's going in. Mm-hmm. But right now, he said he's not ready. He actually admitted that he wasn't ready. He did. Yeah, he said that the other. Day. I and mean, his eye did look swollen the other night. Yeah, it did. And he, you could tell he was working with uh, his little shoot around that he was doing. You could tell he was working. But I feel like Fultz has definitely stepped up. Right after MB went out, he did. Like he's, yeah, he did. He's been sensational, dude. And to get a triple double in that little bit of time was unreal. And I feel like having him in the playoffs, wow! Thank God he came back. Right. All right, boys. I have a little question for everybody here. So uh, we're, we'll go around the round table here. I, I don't think it'll get too heated, but you never know. Do you guys think that this 76ers team could beat the 01 76ers playoff team? Shall we go ahead? No. Why? The 0-1 defense was just too fierce. And you still had some three-point threats, enough, and you had a score in AI that would surpass any of the players that you have on the team currently. 
you, AI had scoring titles. He averaged 32 points a game that season. I'm sorry, 31 points a game that season, 32 points in the playoffs. <laughs> they went to the finals as, like, again, the underdog. You had a guy like Eric Snow who was a lockdown defender. Theo Ratliff who was a blocking machine with Dikembe Mutombo as a rebounding machine. You had Rajah Bell coming off the bench with three points galore. You had AI who could just take the ball and just score whenever he wanted to. You had a lot of depth and a lot of defense in that team. And as much as this team is, this current Sixers team, is plays as a team, so did that team, but in a different way. It's two different animals. You have one who played defense to create offense, whether it be through AI or Snow or Theo or Jones or, you know, um, Raja Bell or anything. With you, this real, team, you really just mentioned Raja, just said Raja Bell. Bell. Yeah, can, Raja really? Bell... Is uh, Rajah Bell better than Bellinelli right now? No, yeah. the way he shoots a three. In that like, year, yeah, no, no way. way, not yeah. even close. No way. Bellinelli shoots threes with his eyes closed, dude. And and, and, <laughs> and, and you and, like and you said that they were a team in a different way. That team literally was told whatever, just give Allen the ball and get out of his way. Did that team average one hundred nine point eight points per game, even though with a slow start? Like, did they average that? Do you have any of those numbers with that one team? Because I have the numbers of. I have the numbers well, go ahead. of the well, what 17, are some? 18 team. Well, yeah, I, I thought you had some. some. Their three point percentage, I know for a fact, wasn't 36.9. That's what the Sixers are, which those numbers are, are bad, like not really bad because they were ranked uh, eighth in the NBA. Look, look nobody. Three point percentage. But what, what was the Sixers team ranked, Joe? I think they were in the 20s. Okay? And AI? He had to take a lot of shots to get what he did. He really did. So that's taking shots from other players. Oh, wait, Aaron McKay. The Kevin made me tumble. What would he do against Embiid? Okay, wait a minute. Wow. So let's, let's go really? player for player. If we're really going to make this argument. Uh, you're going to lose. Let's go player for player. Yeah. Name a player from this team. From from the Joel, team, Joel, from Embiid, team? Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. The Kevin made Mutombo. Okay. No way. He, Joel Embiid literally, Mutombo's not doing anything wrong. At that point, Matumbo was way over the hill in his yeah. career. Athletically, okay, a, a, this is whole, the same to Kemba Matumbo <laughs> that that you asked me a question. Okay, give me, give me a second. Is to Kemba Matumbo coming out the stick, uh, Joel Embiid when he's shooting three pointers? Not a chance. No, way. he's parked under the net. There's no chance, and he can drop that twelve to fifteen to eighteen footer. If whatever whatever he's given, he could take from him. And then he can go down low, bang with him, and move him out of the way. Okay, so out of this table, John B. voting-wise, I agree with Tommy. Joel Embiid is going to basically outscore to Kemi Mutombo and defend them pretty well, too. What do you think? Uh, as of right now, the 0-1 team would beat the, the this team. Why? Allen Iverson and Larry Brown. You, you I, I like I like Art Brown better than that team. Brown. Yeah, but you haven't seen nothing yet. I I, I watched what he did, what he's done with this team over the last four years. Yeah, well, they were also used to losing for a lot of years. Can I, can it's I hard to get away from that. You get a triple double machine in your rookie point guard. Okay, you got Joel Embiid, who is a double digit rebounds a game, twenty three a game, plays less minutes than the oh. Kemba Mutombo did play. But who okay? is you got who, Bellinelli who smashes three? You got JJ Redick who smashes three? You got Ilya Shogun who against? takes charges. Who is Joel Embiid playing against? What center is he playing against? That matches up to Shaquille O'Neal and it's cut type of centers he that Dikembe went against. Dikembe didn't match up with Shaquille O'Neal. He got his ass eight. Sorry, sorry if Chris was listening. Wait, 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 wait. But he got his ass. Wait a minute. But, but his ass how ass can you say ass that ass when <laughs> he got his ass beat? Sorry, I got a little. No, it's cool. cool. I got his ass Here's the funny thing. And it wasn't, good, it, was, it wasn't a good sale and toss session either. You, you, you say that, but then that's where the whole term flop came from. Not because Dikembe was playing bad, because Shaquille O'Neal was flopping. Listen, I know we're not that so popular right now, but I would love to have a Twitter poll <sighs> on what Tommy's question was because I feel like everybody would take this Sixers team. They went 16-0 and at the end. They went and signed Bellinelli and Ilyasova, and those guys have came in off the bench and just dominated. What is Ilyas okay, dominated. Mr. Stat Statistician, what is Ilyasova averaging per year? Listen, this I year. I don't even well, know. But you just asked me about Raj for the Bell. Sixers. For the Sixers, yeah, I'm gonna guess he averages about 11 or 12 a game. 
I'm, I'm just going to guess. I'm just going to guess. Oh, yeah. Flyers, three enough. I'm just going to guess. Right, right, Wait a minute. Right, Tommy, right, pull you're it saying Ilya Silva averages 11 points a game. 11 or 12 a game. He's off the bench, Joey. For the Sixers. Yeah. Okay, so if Markel's getting tagged... No, let's just see if he's right. Let's just see if I'm right, actually. Because sometimes I can here, be here, wrong, not all the time. Here's but. the other thing. So you're, you're mentioning Bellinelli. So how much do you think he's dropping? 14 a game. So you got 25 between Bellinelli and Ilya Silva. Yeah. So are the Sixers scoring 130 a game? The Sixers lately. Because you have Embiid that's scoring Since they got Bellinelli and Ilya Silva, they're averaging scoring, like 118 a game. Wait a minute. You got Embiid that's scoring over 20 a game. You got Simmons that's scoring over 19 a game. You got Sarge who's turning it up and scoring over 18 a game. How how are the and Redick is getting double digits? Fultz is now getting double digits. How where are these points coming from? I, I mean, here's the thing. Redick I did say Redick averages 17 I, a game. I ben did Simmons say, averages 15 a game. I did say to preface this. I know where the numbers are coming from. Are they're saying, coming from those guys. That's where they're coming from. You guys are arguing that this is a better offensive team than the 0-1. And I'm not arguing that that's not true. It's a better true. overall team than the O one. But but you got your guys' argument is hinged on offense. Do you no, notice all the numbers you're throwing at no, me? No, no, it's not hinged on offense. This, you this. guys just mentioned three pointers. Okay, but I mean the conversation's not done, Joe. You can get okay, but then that. tell me what else this team is better at. Rebounding. <laughs> oh wait, well, you looking at me like they're not? Sixers are number one in the league right now. I don't think the Sixers were number one in 01 when Ily they went Ilya to the Sov is 10.9 points. Again. Okay, I was off by a point one. What is Bellinelli averaging? I don't know. Let me, I said 14. Let me, let me get that I said 14. Real. I mean, here's the thing. Oh, shoot me. Point one all. I'm going to put But again, off. here we go with the offense, and I get it. If Even if you're right, I get it. But the defense for the 01 Sixers was fierce. It's the only reason why I think they got to the finals. In dude, the first place. Dude, do you think the 01 Sixers, listen, do you think the 01 Sixers could have beat the Golden State team this year? No. No. Okay, do you think the Sixers this year could beat the Golden State team? Of this Golden State team? Yeah. Do you think the Sixers we have right now, can we beat Golden State? Yes. And the only reason why I say that is because Golden State's falling apart. But the yeah, talent but that the Golden State. A full team, no injuries, they're not beating Golden State. The O one one series. Franny's, the no, um, uh, Franny Zane brought up a good point here. He said, "Depends on whether the, they play 2001 rules or 2018 rules." Ref, I knew that was coming. Refs used to let the players play in O one. He said, yeah, "The game, that's... the game now allows for European players to be more valuable because if anyone sneezes on someone, it's a technical foul." That's true, and and that's where I got the whole went with the whole flop, Tom. Yeah, no, I, I got you. I mean, you know, but like, the rules but, back then yeah, were a but lot different. Matumbo wasn't, he couldn't do I'm anything. I'm not saying Shaq. he... Shaq destroyed him. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Dikembe was good enough for what we needed him to be. Yeah. that That's my point. You should have never traded to get to Kembe. You, you should have Ratliff? kept Ratliff. Yeah. yeah. Well, we had Ratliff on the same team. No, we didn't. We no, traded yes, we him. did. We traded him. We no, no, traded Rat him. Ratliff got traded for Matumbo. He was, he was a part of that trade. No. Nope. Which was a, an asinine trade. He came off the bench. Yeah, he was injured. He didn't come off no, the bench. No, he didn't. We had Tyrone Hill. Yes. And that's true. Theo Ratliff. No, we didn't. Ratliff was going. That's how the game Ratliff was out. injured. Ratliff we never... We had to come back at the beginning of the year. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. He played 55 games, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> here, here's the thing. <laughs> Can you look it up? Maybe I'm right. All right. I don't know. I'm... <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm going to go while I drink another beer. I'm really good, man. Here, here's my thing. I'm on fire. Is Roman Reigns needs my mic ability. The defense of that team would withstand some of the offense that this team would throw at them. Honestly, I th I think this team's defense is better than the one's defense. You're not going to like that. But Dude, a, are you really saying Eric Snow okay. and Aaron McKee? Eric Snow and Aaron McKee can contest with anybody on the Sixers right now. So, I'll throw a stat at you. Did the 01 Sixers have as many turnovers as this current Sixers team? Oh, wow. He meant turnovers. Yeah, because that's been their Achilles heel when they've lost. I mean, you averaged when they were losing and they weren't doing well. They were averaging close to 20 turnovers a game. Did the 01 yeah, Sixers do that? Yeah, they, didn't, they couldn't yeah, do but, it. Yeah, Joey, you can't go by the total season. The you season just did. Sets. No, turnovers-wise. 
Because the you Sixers can't eliminate stats. They've been outscoring teams, so it doesn't matter how much you turn the ball over. You can't eliminate stats just matter. because it doesn't behoove your argument. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, right. <laughs> the 01 Sixers can actually beat this Sixers team. Until they actually win a playoff game, you, you, you don't know. It's a different league, though. You can't say because they lost a playoff league. game. I'm talking that. about team for team. Team for team. That's what we're doing. Allen obviously can win you a game on his own the way he did. He did do that. And he did that, he did that through the whole playoffs. He went, three, the he went three for three with Ray Allen. He went three for three with Vince Carter to get to the NBA Finals. And then he ran out of gas against the Lakers. He just he didn't he, just, just got to be too much for the guy. He didn't just do that through the playoffs. He did that I, through the whole season. Listen, we'll see what happens. Like you know, like everybody has been saying, we'll see what happens. Like Johnny B said so, about the Sixers winning to well, get to where they are. If the Sixers Bellin- go to the finals, who is the AI? Right, then, then we can do it again. Bellinelli, then we'll do this again. What? What's, Whoa, what's, what's Bellinelli average? You're saying Markel Fultz is the, act, is the comparison to Allen Iverson. Well, who else would I compare on this team to? to well, I, I mean, would at least no, accept there's, Simmons. There's, there's no, no, you can't because it's yeah they it's they, a they run team. the offense under the same position, but it's defensively it's a different position. Okay, no. so what? Right, what, what, what did, no, listen, what did Eric Snow average? I well, since you're defending 01, I want to hear what Eric Snow average because if you take JJ Redick and Ben Simmons. Then they're they're getting thirty two a game. I mean, my point they're is getting this. Th- th- thirty two points a game. On, Let's on, see what Eric's selling on. Obviously, if anybody's got anything they'd like to add to this, eight five six four five seven eighty six sixty. Because this might this one might go. Oh, we do have somebody on the line, right? Oh, okay. Here we go. Let's put them on. Hey, you call your own with the Patterson Half Fanatics. Yeah, what's up, Colin? Oh, ah. My man. <laughs> What's up? Wow. What's up, Sean? What's going on, buddy? I love it. <laughs> no, actually, I don't love it. I love you for saying that. <laughs> okay, give your point. I agree. Totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. A whole lot of nada. Okay, but... And they were instructed... Yeah, you take Ben Simmons and Embiid away and you lose. They win. That's true. Nope. No, no way. That's a good point. He's got it, dude. That's what I've been trying to say to you, Joey. Hopefully you agree now. But Allen Iverson was on the team, so. <laughs> I mean, he was. That's true. All right, That's so what it is. AI gets his normal 30 or 35 or whatever. What does the rest of the team do? That's exactly what Sean was talking about. I mean, you have McKee. You have. Anybody else on that team? I mean, I would. No. No, no way. Um, no. Eric Snow is one of the best defenders on that team. On that team doesn't necessarily right, mean... but that's the point. You're comparing teams. You're not comparing. You're not just comparing like this and that. You're comparing teams, a player for a player. Yeah. Eric Snow was the best defender on that team that year. Uh huh. Yeah, and Eric I mean, Snow would be able to stick Ben Simmons. Nope. Come on, look at me right now. Look at me in the eyes. Can Ben Simmons? Can, I mean, can Eric Snow stick Ben Simmons? Please tell me. No way. No. Thank I would. I, I'm not going to say one, yes or no because that's a hard thing to ask. One person on that Sixers team in 01 could stick Ben Simmons, and it was Theo Ratliff. Listen, can Probably AI did. can AI stick JJ Redick off of the screen or shooting Tyrone that three? Hill. No. Or Tyrone Hill. AI's not Skele- stopping. Skeletor is not sticking Ben Simmons. <laughs> I mean, no the, the guy the guy basically got in everybody's way. Tyrone Hill. I mean, you know, he would he would either draw fouls or create fouls. All right, so Sean, so what about uh, Joel Embiid? Who's is the Kemba Mitchell going to be able to contest with him? Exactly. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. So Sean, I'll I'll put the the same statistic. I'll put the same statistic to you that I put to Will. So did the 01 
uh, Sixers have as many turnovers as this current Sixers? So it's, it's and lately, comparable. it's way below that. Lately, like their 16 and 0 run, and even from January to 35 and 11, their turnovers are not that. that nah, they're still up. they're still high. They're still high. No, they're not. They're I mean, fast, they're dude, fast when they're team. blowing teams out, they're around 12 turnovers a game. I mean, here's the thing: the argument basically sets on what the Sixers, this current Sixers team, is going to do come this playoff. Four one Flyers. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if the Sixers. Can can go out and dominate every team like they've been for the last you know sixteen odd games. Then, you know the argument's dead. I think. I mean, there's no way that I could have a leg to stand on in that. Sean, sure, you case. still there? Oh, okay. I agree, and I think. Uh, Exactly. If they can carry that. Sean knows he's in that. He's in the house usually watching these guys play. He would know. Hey, Sean, thirty-five and eleven since January, and thirteen victories over every They're over playoff teams that are around right now. They beat Toronto. They beat Boston. They beat Milwaukee. They beat the Spurs. They beat Miami twice. They beat Washington, they beat New Orleans, and they beat Cleveland twice, and Minnesota and Milwaukee. Again, but 13 wins right there on that streak, Joey. Come on, man. Boom. I'm not arguing that, I'm not saying, arguing that, that this scary. game's not great. I'm not arguing that. I, I think that's where you guys are like misconstruing my argument. You guys are asking me to compare one team to another, and I am. I, but, I appreciate it. But, but I, I have full faith that this team right now is on fire. Sean, I did want to get your opinion. You said that you're a little worried about the Rockets. What's your take on the um, uh, OKC? I think that's what the NBA wants is the Rockets and the Sixers because the way that the Sixers are playing and the uh, way the Rockets are playing, it's going to be a real rock'em, sock'em, three-dropping games. Yeah, man. Well, all right, Sean. Thank you for calling in, my brother. We appreciate it. That's a you good great Sixers call knowledge. Sean. Thanks for the support, man, from the beginning. Man, appreciate we appreciate it. it. You got it. Great call. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, hey, I couldn't find anything wrong with that call. Joe, you? <laughs> Listen, you'll ne you'll never know unless those teams play. It's, it's yeah. only it's, it's only opinion. It's, I'm, it's, I'm allowed to have I'm allowed to have my opinion. You're Even if I'm wrong, I'm allowed to have my Johnny opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's it's look, it's all hypotheticals. But it was a fun it was a fun question I wanted to bring up because I, I started thinking about it and I'm just like I'm thinking of matchups and different stuff like that. But I mean, day. if you're really gonna throw Eric Snow in there, Joey, you're out of your damn mind. <laughs> okay, but well, let me ask you a question. JJ Reddick would shoot threes over him all day, dude. All day. All right, but let me ask you a question. Who's the best defender on this team? On our team? Yeah. Best defender is Joel Embiid. Okay, and currently he's not on the court. Currently he's not on the court. Okay, no. but 52. outside of your center, because that's your center, who's your best defender playing, you know, guarding the guard? Get guarding uh, the best Covington, player. Covington. Covington is your best player. So Covington has been you? playing out, 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 out of this world defensively. So Covington's going to guard the three. Exa no, but Covington has been, in, when they switch off, yeah, yeah. Covington has been on guys. Covington had an amazing game against LeBron James. And the only reason why I bring that up is because when they went in 01, Eric Snow <laughs> would always guard like one of the better players, one of the better shooters, because he would be able to play up on them. Um, he always put their, his hand in the face and was always able to put pressure on them. I'm not saying that that didn't mean he got scored on a hell of a lot. He, he definitely did. Um, but he still was a good enough def – he was probably one of the better defenders on that team, if you're talking right. about guarding. I, I, I feel like this perimeter. is going to go on longer yeah. as during the playoffs, but real quick, they beat Toronto in January 117-111. to Toronto's the number one seed. 
They beat Boston 89-80 when they had Kyrie Irving. They beat Milwaukee 116-94. They beat Milwaukee again 130-95. Milwaukee's not dangerous. They beat Cleveland 108-97, 132-130. to 130. They were destroying Cleveland yeah. that game and let them get back in. But, well, they destroyed Minnesota, who's in the West, 120-108. to Dude, they're on fire. It, I, I'm not arguing Maybe. That. Maybe the whole team during the regular season, if they faced that 0-1 Sixers team, yes. But if you would do a finals right now or a playoff game, one game, one game only, this this Sixers team would beat the 0-1 Sixers. Right, nice job. I mean, here's the thing: you you keep going into what they what this Sixers team has done this season. I'm not arguing that this Sixers team is not good. I'm just saying that defensively, and and we've already covered this, <laughs> is it was two different errors. And the game was played two different ways. Defensively, maybe back in 01, you could do more defensively to stop teams. Whereas now, if that 01 Sixers try to play with the rules now, there's no way they could hang All right, so, with so many of the calls. So I'll, de- I'll destroy what you just said. If you put Eric Snow in the league right now, he's not in the league. If you put Aaron, Aaron McKee in the league right now, he's not in the league. Okay? Yeah. Right, if you that, put Tyrone Hill. He He's is. not in the league. He is, but he might be giving out popcorn and beers at people. In the Dude, the, the the Sixers that were on that team right now would not be in the NBA. They would they, maybe bench players at best. Okay, their but, starting lineup: Allen Iverson would be the only player that starting. Well, Matumbo, but Mutombo. they traded for him. They traded for Matumbo. Yeah, okay, yeah. they made a move to see if they could compete with Shaquille O'Neal. They knew they were going to the finals. They knew it. That's why they did that. Ratliff was injured. If they would have kept Ratliff and just said, we're not going to win this year, we'll keep Ratliff, maybe that 0-1 Sixers team could compete with this team because Ratliff was a hell of a player. And, Joey, real quick, to jump back in on it, when you when I, when I you asked who was going to D-up Iverson, and I said Fultz. You, you, like, Fultz is a terrific defender. He's a good defender, probably better than good. But his wingspan, man, AI is going to have a hard time getting around him. Now, obviously, we, we all know. What what Iverson could do, but that's that's just my personal opinion because I can't see. I mean, here's the thing: Do you think that who's faster, AI or Fultz? Yeah. Okay, so if Fultz doesn't have position, AI is going going around. Doesn't man, matter about wingspan. AI would be getting caught I mean, that, for that's charging with Ilya Sova. Yeah. Well, Ilya Sova would get him on charges that's, all the that's time. That's the other reason why I say the rules are different too. Yeah. Is because charges are called a lot more now than they were back then, and so like Tyrone Hill and and guys like that would. Try and do that, and like I said earlier, either Tyrone Hill was getting fouls drawn on him by taking the charge, or he was calling them. Listen, our only argument right now is that the 01 Sixers had Allen Iverson. Are you serious, really? Or yeah, guy, just like the Cavs. Yeah, yeah. Have, I'm just gonna say that. Just, just like, like LeBron Cavs have, the Cavs. The Cavs have LeBron, and they only have LeBron. You and can't he's put AI and LeBron well, in the same no, category. LeBron gets rebounds and assists. No, LeBron's a far better player than Allen Iverson could ever be. He's one of the, obviously he's one of the top two or three of all time. And I think you're going to smoke. I think you're going to smoke the Cavs playing them because they have only one player. Iverson needed 25 to 30 shots a game to get his average. Yeah, he okay. took way LeBron more shots. James okay, averages Westbrook. 27. Po- Russell Westbrook only takes like 22 shots a game. Stop. I don't know. Really, dude, look up the stats, John. Stop. He's a ball hog. That's why Durant went. He's a ball hog. Allen Iverson was way more of a ball hog. Way more. He's- but he had to. Westbrook doesn't have to. He's got Paul George and Anthony right now. He doesn't have to. He really doesn't. All right. Well, sorry, Philadelphia Phillies. You're not getting talked about this week. <laughs> but um, let's jump into the Flyers, who are currently up 4-1. to one Thank God. Over the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's huge, man. Um, hey, look, the first question I was going to ask was, are the Flyers completely outmatched, or can they give the Penguins a fight? Well, obviously, they're giving the Penguins a fight. So... I'll jump into the next question I was going to ask. Will Carter Hart be our savior when he gets up here, or will he be another Flyers goalie statistic? Uh, Joey? Yeah, you go first. You want me to go first? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the kid already has uh, – he was drafted 48th in the, uh, in the NHL draft, and he, uh, he turns 20 in August, so he's really young, Okay. Um, he was the number one rated goalie when he was taken. So there wasn't goalies going in the first round around that time. And um, he was very young, and he's won a gold medal. He's won a silver medal with the Canadian Junior League hockey team. 
He's had a goals against average of 1.60 in his last season with the WHL. And I, I say, why not give the kid a chance? Especially maybe if we make it deep in the playoffs and goaltending is the number one reason why we didn't go to the finals or win. You know? So I say the kid's worth a shot to bring up. Morazic's not bad, though. I like Morazic. Right now, Elliot's in there. But I feel like Morazic has just never felt like he was part of the team because the coach kept on rotating goalies. You never gave Morazic a straight shot to where he could become your number one goalie. And then you bring Elliot back after an injury. Well, you brought Neu Neuverth first. Yeah. And then Neuverth got injured. And then you bring Elliot in. It's like this coach doesn't know who the hell to put in. You know what I mean? So that's a huge problem. Morazic could probably be a great goalie, but you don't know it. Elliot, Elliot's probably rusty because he's been injured forever. Absolutely. And now he's playing in the playoffs. Like, give that dude a break. Well, he's only let up a goal tonight. I, I know, against Pittsburgh. That's yeah. not bad. But he looked like shit last game. Of course he did, yeah. So, right, some, of that was, some of that was on him. Some of that is players not stepping up, though. Yeah, but there's a saying, 7 nothing. you got your ass yeah, handed to you yeah. as a team, yeah, but, that four, but the goalie should not give up. You're an NHL goalie, <sighs> you should give up 7 goals, dude. Well, he didn't. Well, he didn't, he but the, goal, the goalies as a whole gave up 7, but yeah. Morazic's coming in against a team that's already smashing us in our face. Well, dude. I mean, it, like Voracek, was it Voracek that didn't get off the ice fast enough to get a guy out, and then Malkin just shot around him and scored? Like, if you're not going to take him to the body, get off the ice so you can um, get fresh lights well, out And there. you know what I didn't like? The What's analysts that? were talking bad about that backhander. Backhander's the hardest puck to follow. The one, the one like, defense like that Malkin, one of them in to the player, the Penguin player, yeah. for an easy open net goal. So it was like the defense was working against And we goal. missed ton, tons of uh, net uh, open, not open net shots, but like definitely. There was a couple of scoring chances scoring that we just shot wide. And then we decided to pass a puck when we should have shot it. We allowed Pittsburgh's defense to look way better than they are. They suck. Pittsburgh does not have a great defense at all. But now look, 4-1. to one. Y You know, films everything. You know, maybe we're figuring them out because we went back on the fundamentals of playing hockey and also we watched film on them seeing what their ideas are, how they're carrying the puck into the zone. We kept on skating backwards, letting them come in. Maybe we're charging them. I'm not watching the game. We're winning four to one. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, so to go back to Carter Hart, I absolutely think he's the next big thing. Okay. I've I didn't know much about him, so I did some research. Oh, you're right, man. And Same. this guy has won so many awards, and he's only 19. This guy has got a wall full of awards already, just from like the juniors. Uh, he has a 1.60 GAA, a 94% save percentage, and he by N shoutouts. and by NHL.com he's been compared to, which isn't that bad, to Braden, Braden Holby, and I'll take that. I mean, Braden, Braden Holby has been pretty stellar when he wants to be. Um, I, I think this kid definitely could make some definite noise early. Now here's the problem. I worry about Ron Hextall pulling the trigger. I'm. I don't think he's got the guts to do it. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a guts thing. I just think I agree with you. I think he's going to sit on him. Yeah, and I don't like that. No, I think me strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, but if you bring him in and he gets annihilated, then you just destroyed his career. So well, maybe he's. He's just trying to let him age a little bit and then bring him in. You know what I mean? Listen, because obviously he has a two-way contract. I heard so nobody could pick him up, and he went like you said, Joey. He went thirty-one and six. Yeah. In in his uh, his season with the uh, Everett uh, the Everett uh, Silver Tips. Yeah. And um, his goals against average, like you said, was one point six and a, pretty much a ninety-five percent save percentage. Pretty much. I mean, here's the thing: is even I, I listened to this kid's press conference during his training camp, uh, and this he seems really strong-minded. I here's the thing, you have been if you're the Flyers organization, you have been playing the goalie, you know, roundabout, and you don't know who your next big goalie is. You have to start putting some investment into the. You're goalie. absolutely right because their problem is they pull the trigger too quickly when a goalie gets cold. What they need to do is they need to say, this kid 
You're our starter, Hart, and that's it. You're going to play like yeah. Brodeur. You're going to have 65, yeah. 70 games played. You are going to play a full NHL season regardless of what your goals against average is and regardless of how bad you He'll play. Learn. You're going to learn yeah. because we're going to put all of our marbles in one, uh, what's it called, basket or whatever it is? <laughs> Yes. I'll, I'll just yes. yes. I don't know why. Eggs in one basket. You can put them in a sack. Oh. What's up with the marbles? I don't e know. E eggs You're, in it in sounds like you lost yeah. yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but basically, that's the thing. Like, the Flyers always pull the trigger when a goalie's playing bad. That's what they do. You guys can't get stuck on one thing, can you? you just... I mean, here's the thing. is I completely agree with you. And, and, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that the fans would get behind it. If we had faith that this was our guy, that we're putting all the stock in, we're putting all the chips into the center. Number one, we're going to have a cheap goalie for a couple of years. So we can bring in a guy who can play defense. Because that's that would be my next point. I think one of your questions was, like, how can we improve this team? you got a good farm now, system with defense yeah, them right now. It was, well, you need a fast forward. That's for, what you need. For, I have a question. Go ahead. In your opinion, what do the Flyers need?